Hello students, welcome to another lecture video for ComSci 125 operating systems. In this chapter, we're going to take a look at the multi-level feedback queue policy. But before we continue to this chapter, let's take a short review or recap of what we discussed in the previous chapter. In the previous chapter, we discussed the basic ideas of uh, scheduling policies. Basically, scheduling means deciding which uh, user process will run on the CPU and this decision is made by a component of the OS kernel which we call the scheduler. We discussed some assumptions on the workloads wherein we slowly relax these assumptions as we look into each uh, scheduling policy. We also uh, looked at the different metrics like turnaround time, fairness, response time. And uh, we also note that the SJF or the shortest job first policy optimizes turnaround time because short jobs or short processes processes with short run times gets executed first and another one is the round robin alternates between all processes to optimize the response time then we also incorporated IO near the end of the chapter so that the main idea is whenever a process is waiting for an IO request to complete a new process can be scheduled to run on the CPU. In the last item or the last assumption in the previous chapter is that the scheduler needs to know the uh, runtime of the processes but in actual systems that is actually difficult to do to determine the runtime of processes for example I cannot know the runtime of Microsoft Word or OBS or Firefox so there should be a way to schedule processes that despite having no idea of the runtime of processes we can still achieve a higher turnaround time and achieve a good response time not, I'm sorry not necessarily higher turnaround time but a good turnaround time and a good response time so to do that that is actually the uh, topic that we're going to discuss in this chapter MLFQ or multi-level feedback queue right, was first described in uh, the compatible time sharing system developed by uh, Corbato. The objective is to optimize the turnaround time by running shorter processes first. This is basically SJF. And then we want to minimize response time without knowing the uh, runtime of the processes, right? Because in the preemptive uh, or in the round robin, right? so we need to, or in the preemptive uh, SJF, we need to know the remaining time. So, to be able to achieve these objectives, MLFQ uh, learns from the past to predict the future. So this is uh, an interesting subject to study. How does this work? So, we begin by defining the basic rules for MLFQ. The idea, that's why it's called uh, multi-level, is because we have several 
queues. Okay, so we have uh, these are basically run queues. We have several run queues, and uh, queues are assigned different priority levels. We'll see this in the example later. A process that is ready to run is assigned to a single queue. So let's say a new process arrives, it will be assigned to a queue. Then the scheduler, given this set of distinct queues, will choose a process on a higher priority queue to run on the CPU. Now in case there are multiple processes assigned to the same queue, maybe they have the same priority levels, then round-robin scheduling will be used. So there is a, this is a form of priority scheduling wherein the priority is defined by the queue where the process is uh, on. So for the basic rules for MLF queue, we have the first rule, if the priority of process A is greater than the priority of process B, A will run and B will not run. And the second rule is if the priority of A is the same as the priority of B, A and B will run in uh, round robin. Let's see how it looks. Right. Uh, first, uh, the key is how the scheduler sets the priority levels of the queues. Uh, MLF queue will uh, vary the priority okay, uh, based on the behavior on the observed behavior of the process. So. This is, there is some kind of an audition mechanism here, meaning a process will be given, will be tested, and based on the behavior of that process, the priority will be adjusted accordingly. For example, if a process is repeatedly, uh, a process that repeatedly relinquishes CPU while waiting for I.O., so it must probably be uh, an interactive process, then that process will have a higher priority and will be placed on a queue that uh, is assigned a higher priority level. Now, if a process uh, uses CPU intensively for long periods of time, so this is a CPU intensive process, then the priority of that process will be reduced since the interactivity is not required for this particular process. So this is an example of the different queues, right? multi-level feedback queues. So we have Q1, Q2, Q3, up to Q8 with Q8 as the highest priority queue. This means that process A and process B are higher priority processes. This means that the scheduler will select A then B until everything in this higher priority queue, all the process in this higher priority queue has exited before it can uh, select the next process from Q4, which is actually a lower priority. Then if uh, C is finished, then D will have the chance to execute, to be selected by the scheduler. So as long as there are processes in high priority queues, they will be scheduled first. That means that as long as Q8 is not empty, all the processes that are in this queue will be executed first by or will be scheduled first by the scheduler and probably you'll have some idea of the effect of that scenario but we'll uh, go to that later so given this uh, 
diagram or this structure and we have a process running here for example since this uh, we said that uh, MLFQ adjusts the priority based on the observed behavior the question that we need to answer now is how do we change the priority of a process let's take a look at the first approach so in this approach we introduce three new rules in addition to the two rules that we are given here so the third rule called rule three when the process enters the system it is placed in the highest priority queue so it's some kind of the addition system then rule 4a if a process uses up an entire time slice recall the definition of time slice from the previous chapter this is actually in the round robin scheduling policy okay so if a process uses up uh, an entire time slice when running its priority is reduced it moves down on the queue and uh, rule 4b if a process gives up the cpu before the time slice is up it stays on the same priority level so in this manner mlfq approximates uh, shortest job first so let's take a look at an example so here we have uh, three scheduler queues low priority medium priority and a high priority when a new process arrives it will be placed in q2 which is a high priority queue and then if the time slice allotted is 10 milliseconds and at this point uh, this process completed the entire time slice then after that 10 milliseconds it will be demoted to Q1 so it will now stay here in this queue Q1 and then if it completes the time slice which is shown here it does it did complete the time slice it will now be moved to the lowest priority queue so this is rule 3 rule uh, 4a and then rule 4 uh, 4a is applied Now for a second example, uh, along came a short process. So again, we have uh, three queues, Q0, Q1, and Q2. Process A is a long-running CPU-intensive process. So process A is denoted by black here. And then process B, is a short running uh, interactive uh, short running interactive process with 20 minute, uh, milliseconds runtime and A has been running for some time and then B arrives at time T100 so as, as shown here since A is a CPU intensive process over time its execution it will eventually go down to q0 because this is the this is the low priority q then at time 100 a new process will come in as given in rule 3 here when a new process arrives it will go to the highest priority queue so at this point we can see that when process b arrives it is placed in q2 then it will uh, it has a runtime of tw 20 milliseconds but uh, we are only given a time slice of 10 milliseconds so 
at this point this point this is time 110 process B will be moved down to the next low, lower level Q with, via the application of rule 4A and at this point at this time with this time interval uh, B has already completed and then uh, A will continue its execution so in this uh, in this scenario the scheduler actually does not know the runtime of the new process you can say that uh, this is the actual runtime of the process but the scheduler does not know this runtime it tries to take a guess by placing it in a in the highest priority queue okay, which basically it assumes that this new process is short which actually if it is then it will finish early which it did thus it approximates the SJF without having to know the remaining times isn't that a good uh, strategy okay, so that's the beauty of this uh, multi-level uh, feedback queue this is the actual runtime of the process new process the scheduler has no idea of this runtime actual runtime it assumes that it is a, a short uh, a process with a short runtime places it in the highest priority queue then adjusts accordingly depending on the time slice now let's talk about IO so what about what if there is an IO so we have some assumptions again here uh, process A is a long running CPU intensive process so most likely this will uh, be on the lowest priority queue then process B is an interactive process that needs the CPU only for one milliseconds before uh, performing an IO so what will happen so looking at this uh, schedule by applying 4b remember that our time slice is 10 10 sec uh, 10 milliseconds right so at this point uh, process a is a uh, process uh, B is running on the CPU and after one second it performs an IO okay. so it did not complete the entire time slice okay. since that is the case process B will be will not be demoted to this queue okay. process B will not move down here because uh, it did not complete the full time slice it was interrupted by an IO request after one second so the idea of this is actually the application of uh, rule 4b which means that we should not penalize a process by reducing its priority or by downloading it to a lower priority queue if CPU is given up before time slice com uh, completes right? So the MLFQ approach keeps the, an interactive job at the highest priority. So obviously Q2 is an interactive process, so it should be given high priority, and this is achieved by uh, MLFQ in this manner. So knowing now how the basic rules and the approach one of MLFQ uh, works are there problems that 
might arise given this scenario. Yes, there will be trouble. There will be problems, and there are actually three problems. The first one is called starvation. In this uh, problem, if there are too many interactive processes in the system, long-running processes will never receive any CPU time. So, if you look back at this diagram, as long as there are as long as the queue here in Q8 is long, meaning there are other processes coming in here, these uh, low priority processes will never get executed and thus they will starve. So that's called starvation. So that's the first problem. The second problem is a process may change its behavior over time. That means some processes initially they may perform heavy computations but at the later stage of its execution a process might perform intensive I operations saving the results of the computation or transferring the results of the computation to another machine. So there is a change in the characteristic of the process from CPU intensive to IO intensive. So what will be the behavior of MLFFQ? Because if we if we stick to the to the basic rules, uh, uh, there will also be starvation if we stick to that. Uh, to the basic assumptions. Then the last uh, issue is called uh, gaming the scheduler. So what does this mean? This means that after running 99% of a time slice, the process will issue an IO operation. So this does not consume the entire time slice, thus the process remains in the current queue. Right? So looking back at this example, Let's say at time uh, at time nine, process B. So a time uh, process B will execute uh, until time nine of the time slice, and then issue an interrupt. Okay. So by doing that, process B always stays in the higher priority queue, even if uh, its true nature is actually it's an, a CPU intensive uh, process. So that's what we mean by gaming the scheduler. Thus, the process gains a higher percentage CPU time. So, to address these uh, issues, we introduce approach to to address star starvation and the uh, a CPU bound process becoming interactive or I/O uh, intensive, we do this by introducing uh, Rule Five. So after some time period S, we move all the processes in the system to the topmost queue. So again, we introduce a new parameter here S wherein everybody gets promoted to the highest priority queue. So a good question would be what will be a good value for S? So let's take a look at an example. So we have uh, on the left, okay, we have uh, first we have uh, a long running process A and two short running interactive processes B and C and uh, the priority boost okay, S will be 50 milliseconds. Now on the left there is no priority boost. So given this uh, scenario, what will be the schedule? So process A here will be in Q2 and after 10 uh, milliseconds it will move down to Q1 and then 
uh, eventually it will go down to uh, Q0 okay? and then at time uh, 100 shown here the two interactive processes arrive B and C so what will happen is these two interactive processes will uh, execute on the CPU for the remaining period that means that A will not be given a chance to execute okay, because B and C are alternating in using the CPU because they are higher priority interactive processes now if we have uh, a priority boost here okay, so what happens is uh, after 50 uh, milliseconds low uh, low level uh, low priority processes will be brought up to the higher priority queue so what do i mean what do we mean by that so this is each blocker is 10 milliseconds so one two three four and then one two three four so after uh, 50 uh, milliseconds okay, process a will be brought back to q2 so that it can compete now in a round robin fashion in q2 so it actually solves the problem of starvation meaning a will get the chance to execute and then initially it is a cpu bound process it now becomes uh, let's say a io intensive process so the priority boost addresses uh, starvation and uh, changing of the nature of the process from CPU being CPU intensive to uh, being I/O intensive. How do we prevent the issue on gaming the scheduler? Okay. So the idea is to have a better accounting of the CPU time consumed by processes in each uh, queue so we need to have to store additional information about the cpu time consumed by the processes so we introduce a uh, rule for here which is basically the rewrite, rewrite of rules for a and rules for b what does this rule say once a process has consumed its time slice originally uh, if this happens the process will be moved down to a lower to a lower priority queue okay? regardless of how many times it has given up the cpu its priority is reduced so even if uh, the process did not uh, complete the time slice allocated to it once it's completed automatically the process will be noted so let's take a look at an example to better understand what this means so on the left there is no uh, automatic priority deduction so what happens is uh, process B okay, continues its execution with from time to time uh, A uh, having a chance to execute so uh, this is this is the similar scenario and this is the similar scenario okay. so what happens 
by properly accounting for the CPU time consumed by processes. As shown here, if the process, okay, if the process uh, consumed the time slice, even if there is a gap here, short, small gap here, because probably by gaming the scheduler, it will be demoted to the lower priority queue. Eventually, this process, process B, will now be in queue zero, and they will now be scheduled in uh, around robin fashion, which means that uh, we were able to solve the gaming of the scheduler. Again, the gaming happens because if we don't apply rule four, if we don't apply rule four, process B will remain in Q2, which is a high, the highest priority queue in our uh, setup here. So, what are some other issues and how do we tune the parameters to MLFQ? Okay. So MLFQ has uh, some parameters that we can fine tune like the number of queues. Okay. In our running example, we have uh, three queues. Right. We can have more. Right. What is the time slice per queue? So let's say it's possible that we can have, let's say, 10 here, can have 20 here, can have 30 milliseconds here, the time slice, you can set that. Uh, what's the best value for S? So remember that S will be used for uh, priority boost. Okay? So what is the correct, is a good value for that and other parameters. So typically, higher priority games are given, uh, priority queues are given short time slices. As I said, I mentioned 10 here. And low priority will have higher, uh, higher time slices. Uh, so, no, sorry, it's... Uh, 10, 20, 40. So that's how to configure or to tune this uh, MLF queue. Now, for some operating systems that implement MLF queue, for example, Solaris, it has what we call time sharing scheduling class. Solaris has, diff, uh, has what we call scheduling classes and this time sharing scheduling class uses a set of tables to tune the parameters. It has 60 queues and is slowly increasing the time slice length. Right? Uh, the highest priority is 20 milliseconds and the lowest priority is a few hundred milliseconds. For free BSD, uh, a mathematical formula is used to determine the priority and is, all, is decayed over time. So it's reduced over time. And then for other OSS like uh, Linux, higher priority levels are uh, given to OS kernel services. Uh, in future chapters, we're going to look at the uh, computation of priority in the Linux operating system. So other OSS also allows users to give an advice to help set the priority levels of uh, a particular process using the nice command. So you can check this. Uh, by looking at the okay. so yeah 
criteria of some adjustment values. Then we look at uh, H stop. Uh, we can see this uh, NI here. So this is a nice uh, parameter or the value for the nice the niceness of a process. Let's say 90. Uh, let's take. Uh, so this is the code okay uh, the process for the for the cpu.elf and it has a niceness of zero so this can be adjusted using the nice command so we have the parameters here The niceness values range from minus 20, most favorable to the process, to 19, least favorable to the process. So if you want to increase the niceness, so we can... Let's try this, nice, minus 11, 3, 2, 7. This so the default is zero. That's not how it's done. Sorry about that. Okay, and then let's get the process. So we have the niceness here set to 11 is actually the priority but we'll discuss this later in uh, when we talk about the Linux uh, uh, scheduler. So for the summary uh, for MLFQ these are the new rules, new rules that uh, we define. So basically, uh, rule one means that if the priority of a process A is uh, greater than the priority of a process B, depending on the queue where it belongs, then A runs first and then B doesn't. Now, if uh, both A and both B belong to the same queue, with the same priority level, then they will run in a round robin fashion. For root three, uh, when a job enters the system, it is placed in the highest priority queue, the same as the original. For root four, okay, to prevent uh, gaming the scheduler, uh, whenever a process uh, has expired in, has uh, consumed the time slice, whether in a continuous fashion or not it will be demoted in the queue and then 
root 5 after some time period s move all the jobs in the system to the topmost queue. This is uh, priori priority boosting. So that will be all for chapter for this chapter MLF queue.